During World War II, both US Army Air Force and the British RAF soon discovered the benefits of offensively used air power. The heavy bombers that could penetrate deep into enemy territory in order to disrupt or destroy German economy and means of war production. This new strategy gave a significant boost in development of the airplanes and bombing techniques. More and more advanced and complicated optical bomb sites were developed that soon became a state-of-the-art mechanical computers, like an American Northern bomb site, which proved to be a cutting edge of aiming technology. However, this method of aiming the airstrikes works well as long as the bombardier has a visual contact with the target. But in late 1941, the RAF broke off the attempt at precision bombing, and in February 1942, the British Defence Committee ordered a switch to night area bombing, principally against urban centres. This new approach created a significant technical problem. How to spot and hit the target, which is completely blacked out and shrouded in darkness? The solution to this problem was radio navigation. The British engineers came up to an idea to track and guide the bombers directly over the target using radio waves. And that's how OBO was born, a blind bombing targeting system which was the most precise and effective throughout the whole war. The radar technology back then did not allow to guide the bombers over the target which was a couple of hundreds miles away with the required precision, but the range measurement could be made very accurately. Here's how. The idea is very simple. Imagine a ground-based radio transmitter that sends a signal at a specific frequency and the aircraft equipped with a transponder, a device which receives, amplifies and retransmits the signal back to the station. Knowing that the radio wave is traveling with the speed of light and by comparing the time each signal travels to the aircraft and returns to the origin, the OVO operator could very accurately determine the range to the aircraft. Let's see how the system worked in practice. There was an OBO radio station somewhere on the southeast coast of England. The station was called the CAT. Prior to a mission, a distance to a selected target was measured and a circle was drawn around this station, so that it passed directly over the target, with the transmitter in the exact center. The transponder-equipped plane was ordered to fly north of the target until he reached the arc of the circle, and then it would attempt to fly along the circumference of the circle towards the release point. The distance between the plane and the station was carefully tracked by the OBO operator back in England. He would use a specially designed oscilloscope to see if the plane strayed from the path of the circle and gave the pilot instructions on how to regain it. These instructions were sent automatically via Morse code. The CAT station sent continuous darts if the aircraft was too close to the station, and continuous dashes if it was too far, and from these the pilot could make the needed course corrections. If the pilot was on the exact path, the dots and dashes merged together, giving the long dashes, or continuous signal, similar to the oboe, the musical instrument, hence the name of the whole system. However, while the CAT transmitter could tell that the aircraft was somewhere in the circle, it was impossible to tell at what point it was. So how did the crew know when to drop the bombs? Well, there was a secondary OBO station placed somewhere northeast coast of Midlands, called the Mouse. During bomb run, the pilot forwarded his altitude and ground speed by the radio to the operator of the Mouse station. Based on that information, the mouse operator calculated the exact release point, as well as the distance from this point to the station. Then the operator waited until the plane approached the required distance. Shortly before reaching the release point, the mouse operator sent a warning signal also via Morse code. Five dots indicating the release point is imminent and the dash signaling the bomb release command. There was a network of OBO stations over southern England and any of the stations could be operated as a cat or a mouse, as the need demanded. However, one of the limitations of OBO was that only one plane could be controlled at a time, and so usually it wasn't fitted to the bombers but to the Pathfinder planes, mostly RAF Mosquitoes. 
Their task would be to fly ahead of the main bomber group and drop marking flares at the aiming point for the bombardiers. The flares were called target indicators or TIs and were usually colored red or green. The Germans were aware that falling TIs mean doom and destruction for the marked area and tried to shoot them out using artillery. They even tried to mislead the British bomb aimers deploying fake flares, but they never managed to get the right color. The Pathfinder pilots had to be highly skilled and precise, as they were to fly through a 35 feet narrow bomb run corridor which was less than the Mosquito wingspan, with a constant speed, altitude and a steady flight with no evasive action against enemy defense. The system was first used in December 1941 and became operational a year later and proved to be precise enough for area bombing missions. The German radar operators soon discovered the evident curved pattern of the Allied bombers that appeared on their radar screens and called it a boomerang. But it took over a year to discover the mystery of the system. Several attempts of jamming the oboe were conducted, but the Brits managed to stay away one step further, changing the frequency and keeping the system effective until the last days of war. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please make sure to subscribe this channel so you don't miss any of the new content. See you next time.